back to my channel, Jamie from Colors. My name is Jamie, and today we're gonna take a look at some different stuff. I don't know, it's not coloring book related, but it should be fun anyways. So, um, a couple weeks ago, probably at this point, I tried um, making my own pattern paper with a jelly plate for the first time, and I just wanted to show you what kind of things I guess I've been doing with that paper and then we'll do a take two, you know, try it out again, see what I've learned. Um, so these are two pictures that I have just done in my own time. I'm sorry, because of the frame on this one, I kind of get that glare from my light, but um, this was my first. And so that pattern paper is in the butterflies and the flower and her um, jewelry here. And then her eyes as well, but you can't see them very well. But I like this picture pretty well. I think it turned out really cute. Okay, then this is the one I just finished. This was kind of my second attempt at a picture. And this one doesn't have as much paper in it. Um, and so the, the dream catcher back here, this is different paper. The center here is paper, and then her headband is paper. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. And of course you have, I have a collage background there, so you can kind of see like different layers underneath. So, which I just love. So I thought we would do a little one. So I ordered um, some canvas from Amazon, 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 some uh, different canvas panels. And it came in a set of different sizes, which I thought that's awesome because we can, tr I can try out different sizes. Maybe I'll find that I really like working on one particular size. So these Arteza canvas boards um, came in, five by seven, eight by 10, nine by 12, and 11 by 14, which I usually work on 11 by 14. Because that's what I've had in the past. That's what I've just had in my stash, but I was out. So I needed some more canvas. Oh my goodness. So I got a whole bunch, 28 pieces here. Um, so we're not going to do 11 by 14 because that is what I have done in the past and I need to try something different. So I'm kind of thinking this, oh, whoops, this eight by 10 maybe is kind of the size of a piece of paper almost, or even just the little five by seven might be fun to just do something smaller. You know what, let's do, let's do the eight by 10. That'll be fun. So first thing is first, first thing is first, I gotta open this thing. And then we're gonna do some just background layer paper. A lot of this might be, uh, it's gonna be sped up because this is a process. <laughs> we're gonna try to do it all in one video in one day, which, which is a lot. So, and I don't want you to be here for 10 hours. You know, 30 minutes is my goal, so. <laughs> All right, so, and I haven't ever tried these. I don't really care. <laughs> canvas panels or canvas panels, and I just don't really care. Like, as long as they're not completely warped, I just feel like you can work with them. If you don't like the surface, you can gesso them a few times. You can sand them. You can, I'm gonna put paper all over them, so it really doesn't matter what the surface is, so. I don't have any opinion on different brands or anything of canvas panels because I just I just don't care. All right, so I have a few things that I'm going to use for background. One is is I went to um, a what are they called? Like a Goodwill. Here we have Deseret Industries, the DI, and I found a C.S. Lewis, but it's just old paper. It's, it's just old paper. It's falling apart. Please do not feel sad for this book. It was published in 1970, so it's falling apart. 
I mean, I, I would never do this to a new book and even an old book, my dad would have a heart attack, but we're gonna use it as some collage paper and we might even paint, like it's just falling apart. We might even paint on, like use some of it with our jelly plate to make um, other paper. We'll just take a couple of pages of that to use. And then while I was at the Goodwill at the uh, Deseret Book as well, I found some old um, piano music or guitar music. This is guitar, I guess. Doesn't really matter to me. So just so, because I like having, I really like having music popping through. So we will just take a piece of this as well. And I paid a dollar, a dollar for for this. So it's a cheap way to get um, paper for your collages. <laughs> And then I just tear it up and we are going to glue it to our canvas with some matte medium. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'll see you in a second. tearing off the edges because I've learned that I don't like the hard edges but you don't you know experiment if, if you like the edges you want to put them on the line them up with the edges of the panel or whatever that is totally fine and up to you so we're going to start with some of this um, I also have these. These are like a rice paper or something that is very see-through, very thin, and I have a couple of different, so this one's like checkerboard, and then I have like some swirlies, and then I think there were, oh, I didn't see the stars. That's kind of cool. I haven't used that one before. Or there's this swirly. Hmm. This one I used and I really like it. I like that star. Is there another star one? I don't think so. I haven't seen it before. Well, there is. Look at that. Okay, let's use a couple of the star paper then. Okay, of that. So I'm just right now, I'm just kind of getting supplies, what I may want. This is no color, just whatever I have laying around. Um, yeah, anything. All right, we're gonna glue it on with some matte medium. And there is no rhyme or reason to my gluing techniques, so.
And you definitely don't have to keep your words going the right direction. Tip them upside down, move them around. Upside down, sideways, they're just there for texture. I try to do it without getting wrinkles, but if you get wrinkles, that's fine too. It just adds to the texture. Not a big deal. There we go. Nothing that happens at this stage matters. So if your paper like bleeds and get your canvas dirty or words run because nothing matters at this point. So just enjoy it. Just get your hands dirty, get some glue on them. <laughs> Just enjoy it. All right, now as that kind of dries, we wanna think about what we want to be our focal point, what our color story we might want. So the last two pictures that I did of those girls I showed you, um, I drew them in my Procreate app on my tablet and then just printed them off and used them as a template. Um, but I want this to be accessible to everyone. So we're gonna actually use a coloring book to pick our um, picture that we're going to put on here. So I'm going to, let's take a look at this coloring book. This is called Fashion Coloring Book for Girls. And I don't, like, does it even have a artist? I don't even see an artist to give credit to for this book. All right, so we can kind of pick a girl or something that we want to put on here. Be fun, there's tons of girls in here. Ooh, that's cute. Is she too big? She might be, okay. Could even do a couple of girls. She's cute. Oh, she's kind of fun. Might be really cute. Okay. Oh, she's cute too. like her. Let's take her out. Okay, <clears throat> this needs to dry. All right, so we're looking at this picture and I'm looking at like what kind of colors am I gonna want to do her with? I, my next kind of thing is to put color on the canvas just as background color. So let's look at, let's use 
our Neo Color 2s to kind of pick a palette. So we want kind of a background and then a foreground kind of palette. So let's, we can kind of just see what we're thinking here. <clears throat> So background, I'm thinking maybe some browns, greens, maybe, maybe something a little cooler. Let's see. This is raw umber. That might be a great darkest color for our background. And then maybe, maybe we could do like a cool blue and a cool green maybe. Here's ultramarine. That could be pretty. And then Be a lighter color. This is turquoise green. So those three could be like kind of our background kind of colors. Okay, and then for foreground, I'm, we gotta make paper. So she'll have a skin tone, and then maybe I have some paint colors here. Let's see what we have. So here's a light pink. Ooh, there we go. Kind of a light pink kind of color. That's pretty with those. And then I have this, this is called Indian Yellow. It hasn't even been opened yet, let's see. If I can open it without making a mess. That's always the question, isn't it? The answer is usually no. Okay, here we go. Nope, see, I already got it on her. That's okay, this it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so this is that Indian yellow color. It's beautiful. So I think those two colors would be great in there. And then Um, I'm kind of loving this bright green color that I have. It's called Brilliant Yellow Green, and it's by Liquitex. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. I've probably bumped it a couple of times. I am a little bit of a hot mess express at the moment. Okay, trying to get these open. All right, so this color is just really bright and beautiful. And then the other color that I have is cobalt teal. Okay, so I'm kind of liking that. I think that will work. So let's um, set this aside and let's color our background real quick. And then, 
so it can dry. Um, we're going to take the raw umber. I'm going to put it around the edges, I think. I think we'll have to do this in two parts. So we won't be able to do the whole picture today. We will get it ready and then next time we'll finish it. So, cause it just takes too much time for all of it to dry and everything in between. Okay, so I put that on the edges. Um, then let's just kind of randomly add some color here and there. This is the ultramarine. And then this is the turquoise green. I really like these for this because I can just scribble. <laughs> I feel like a kid, it's fun. And then we use water to spread them around. All right, so we'll then we'll take some water and just activate those, dissolve them, mix them in there to make our background. I'm going to just start with doing that raw ember around. Okay, we will keep those colors nearby because we may want to add them again. We're going to let this dry for a little bit while we set up to color some paper that we'll use for our collage. So let me get that set up. Okay, as you can see, my jelly plate has been used a few more times since last time I used it because it was like brand new out of the package last time. This time, not so much. Okay, so I've pulled my paints, pulled a roll brayer. Let's just have some fun. I have some stencils, some sponges. We will have some fun. So let's start with just a little bit of white. And that pink. Ooh. And we will brayer that on. And then I'm going to use the paper from um, the books I bought today. So that's what I'm going to use. And then we'll also kind of use my paper stash of stuff I've already made. But the paper we're gonna make today, we will use the paper from this little book that's falling apart. Sad as it is. Okay. So we'll put him down there. And we'll pull him up. So we have just some nice pale pink, a little texture we'll add to him in a minute. We could even do the contents, let's see. Okay, and we'll kind of brayer that again. Okay, and then let's grab a stencil. I will link the website that I got my stencils from because I did go ahead and order some bigger stencils and they are awesome, so. Put this guy down and then let's use a little more pink and maybe some black. 
here we go. So we'll put some pink here and there. Put a drop or two of black. I do like this fluid pink I have found. It just works easier. And then we'll just kind of brayer it. I don't want to mix them too much. Okay, and then we'll take what we've already pressed on. Ooh, and look how fun that is. Cool. I never know. You never know what it's going to look like. Love that. Maybe we'll even put this one this way. A little bit of texture. Love it. Okay, we'll kind of brayer it. Maybe we'll add a little bit of white and maybe even a little bit of this iridescent gold will be fun. Just to kind of put on there. And then let's take like a little sponge. There's so much you can do with these. I couldn't believe it when I started. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much you can just play and have fun with. So I love it. So just kind of. Get so this one has some more of a gray, but I think it's beautiful. Let's brayer that a little bit and we'll get a clean paper and start a new, maybe a music paper just because it's bigger and we can kind of clean it up. Okay, and I do have some pinks already done with this color, so I will pull from that too. Ooh, look how cool that looks. It's got like some purpley almost. Cool. All right, so we'll set that aside and let's do some blue and green colors just to have some fun. All right, so we'll take our blue, our cobalt teal. Haven't used this color yet. I'm excited and we'll just kind of do it by itself first. Ooh, that's a pretty color. And we'll grab, I think this one is fun. It's got a lot of different textures on it. So we'll lay that down. So, all right, and then maybe some white. We'll try, let's put some white on here. And you know what you can do is take your paper. Where did my book go? And press it on top of the stencil. Could even like use the brayer to kind of help. You get kind of a, that's kind of cool, huh? 
Okay, and then you can take it up. And use it again. Cool, I love it. And then this side we kind of, we didn't do, so let's try it. Yeah, and we'll have like three different looks from one little thing, love it. Okay, let's put some more of that blue in here. And I want something a little bit darker, and so I did pull, if I can find where I put it, a little darker teal, or I thought I did. Okay, I know I did, but I don't see it here. Oh, here it is, here it is. Okay, so <laughs> we'll use this color. This is some Southern Ocean Blue, and this is not a fluid paint, so it doesn't move quite as easily on the plate, but that's okay. But it's definitely darker and beautiful here, so we'll kind of kind of mix these two together to get some darker shades because we don't want all of our paper to be the same tone. We have that nice with some dark spots. This one as well. Cool, and then we'll kind of brayer that out, which of course. Okay, my camera's battery died, and of course, nothing goes back. <laughs> Nothing's easy. So, we're gonna put some white on here just to help clean it up here. Just, I just make paper all day long, it's just fun. It's just fun. We'll grab some stencil. Let's see what we have. Ooh, this one, oh, the bubble one would be cute because it's like water or something. We'll put that on there. We'll grab that darker paper that we have put one here and then I'll grab one that doesn't have the darker paper and we'll stick it there. Pull it up so it's got some texture on there. Some texture, just a little bit. This one's just kind of turning into a cleaner up kind of thing. End up with a lot of different stuff on it. Just nice textures. So I'll just make some paper for this project, you know? Whatever colors we want on here.
our canvas. We've made some paper in our um, color scheme. So here's our canvas. And I just want to add a little gesso to this. So I'm going to just spritz a little on there. Nothing too serious. And I'll just use a brayer to kind of, I want it mostly in the middle. Just get some more texture in there and then gives us somewhere to put our, um, our subject as well. gives us a place. Um, I think I want a little more of the dark blue because I just see a little dark blue here. Let's put a little dark blue over here. Maybe there a little bit. All right. Just kind of Just a little bit. Okay, kind of gives us a good place to work from. So that is going to dry. All of my papers are going to dry. And then when we come back next time, we will transfer just using a transfer um, graphite paper. We will transfer our subject over onto our canvas and we will paint her and use paper to put it on their canvas. So that's where we're at. Sorry this is a two-parter. I was hoping for a one-parter, but this is just too much. So I hope you guys have an awesome week, weekend, that you find time to relax, to de-stress, to take a deep breath and throw some paint around because, geez, I have. I hope your room is as messy as mine, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!